Intel and AMD love to compete. Unfortunately, one of the things they compete in is who can come up with the most confusing naming convention possible for their processor lineups. I had to make a video simplifying Intel lineup, and fortunately for you guys, I'm gonna do it for AMD now. With that said though, keep in mind that this video is not technical in nature. Its purpose is to give you, the average consumer, a layman and simple idea of which processor right for your need without going into all the complexities. So if you've come here for super technical knowledge, you're not gonna get that here. What you are gonna get is specific details describing exactly what the processor is capable of and if it's right for your needs or not. Now keep in mind we are going to be primarily focusing on laptop class processors since that's where the majority of buyers tend to focus especially when watching my content. However, you can loosely use this for desktop class processors as well, but it's not designed for it. And yes, also keep in mind that as time goes on, the information in this video will become less and less relevant, especially several years down the road, once AMD yet again inevitably completely revamps their processor lineup. So with all that out of the way, you can use the chapters below to skip to any section of the video that you want to, and we're gonna get right into it. In the world of AMD, currently, we basically have three branches of processors. So you basically have AMD's Ryzen lineup, and that one specifically is featured in non-premium laptops, or so laptops that are more on the budget-friendly side or may not have premium tier build. And then you have a level higher than that, which is the Ryzen AI class of processors. These processors are generally featured in more premium laptops like Ultrabooks, more expensive gaming laptops, and a handful of other higher tier devices. And then at the very top, you have AMD's Ryzen AI Max processors, only really available on a handful of machines at the time of this video. This processor class is basically AMD's most versatile class of processors for their laptop lineups. Now it is worth noting, while AMD does use fancy marketing and call some processors Ryzen AI, while others are just labeled as Ryzen, Many of their base Ryzen class processors do have built-in AI functionality through what's known as a NPU or neural processing unit. I'm not gonna talk too much about it. It enables functionality like Copilot Plus, for example, but for 95% of you, that functionality is going to be entirely irrelevant, so don't spend too much time worrying about the AI marketing. At the very bottom of the table, we have AMD's Ryzen 3 processor. Now, these models typically are featured in entry-level or value-oriented laptops, so they have a cheaper price point, they have a modest core count, and their key focus is general productivity. So they're great for everyday web surfing, for example. They can also stream 4K content on sites like YouTube. They're capable of general productivity like word processing or number crunching on Excel, for example. You can even do programming and coding on them. And yes, they can even be used for some degree of light photo and video editing. So if you're editing within the full AC resolution on programs like DaVinci Resolve, you'll be just fine. And yes, they do also offer some degree of gaming capabilities. They're not designed for it, but you can do casual or light gaming on them if you're looking for a budget solution. It is worth noting at the time of this video, Ryzen 3 processors do not have a built-in NPU, so they don't have local AI processing capability. The next tier up is the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen AI 5 processors. Ryzen AI 5 processors, again, tend to be featured in more premium laptops, but both these processor classes typically have the same objective, which is enhanced productivity. Thanks to higher core counts and better threading support, they're great at multitasking, so they can run more programs at once than a Ryzen 3 chip can. They also tend to offer better capabilities, like being able to run more code and process it more quickly, so they're great for heavy-duty programming. They tend to be able to do video editing with up to 4K footage, which is a big step up from Ryzen 3 chips. They're also great for professional grade photo editing. You can even use them for more higher end gaming. So if you're trying to run game at higher settings, especially if you have it paired with a dedicated GPU, you'll get some great gaming performance. And yes, you can even do some basic 3D modeling with these chips. So if you're running programs like Blender or you're an architect, for example, and you need a lot of design programs, Ryzen 5 chips, while not ideal, are often sufficient for those kind of use cases. And most Ryzen 5 models do have a built-in neural processing unit, so they are capable of running localized AI programs. Moving on to the more powerful stuff, we get into the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen AI 7 chips. These processors have higher core counts, better multi-threading support, which means they're fantastic 
at basically multitasking, running complex programs together at the same time without breaking a sweat. They also tend to have great support for gaming. So they're designed to basically be paired with discrete laptop GPUs and run modern day titles at really high settings, providing for an enthusiast class experience. Of course, they also excel in visually intensive programs like Blender again. So if you're doing 3D modeling, when paired with a GPU, these are designed for some professional grade stuff. It's also worth noting that these chips are great if you're doing 4K streaming. So if you're running a 4K stream on programs like Twitch or YouTube, for example, these processors can definitely handle that. They're also great for running very complex code and compiling it in record times. And of course, they do have a built-in AI functionality thanks to a localized NPU. So if you are running AI heavy programs, you'll have an advantage there as well. Though the biggest downside with these chips is that they are more power hungry than the lower tiered Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 chips. So they'll generally give you less battery life, however, greater performance. Now we're getting really close to the tip of the mountain and here reside the Ryzen 9 and Ryzen AI 9 processors. Honestly, less than 5% of you watching should even consider a processor this far up because it's going to be overkill, frankly put. Thanks to an insanely high core count and even more threads as a result of that, they're designed for running the most robust, demanding, and often most niche applications. So for example, if you're a professional studio animator and you are making short films or entirely long animation videos, then you can definitely benefit from the Ryzen 9's capabilities. Also, if you are an enthusiast class gamer who wants to play the most demanding of video games, how to completely max out when paired with a discrete GPU, this is the chip that's gonna get you to that point. Or perhaps you're doing machine learning or running LLMs, large language models, you're going to need a processor of this class to be able to effectively do that. And yes, this is also a fantastic chip for running complex AI programs at a localized level. They tend to offer pretty powerful NPUs, which again are imperative for that kind of functionality. At this point, a lot of you are probably like, I don't even really know what half that stuff is. That's a good thing because you probably don't need this processor. But for those who do, they probably already have a pretty good idea of why this chipset is the right one for them. Keep in mind, Ryzen 9 and Ryzen AI 9 chips, while very powerful, are not efficient. They tend to consume far more battery than the lower end processors and also often have a far more exuberant price tag associated with them. And technically speaking, at the very top, you have the Ryzen AI Max chips. These processors are basically doing more or less what Ryzen 9 chips do, but they have even more cores, higher threading support, and one key difference is that they run at a much higher wattage. The result is that they have more raw horsepower in the CPU, which of course results in them being able to run programs even more swiftly, especially when doing extremely demanding work. So they're more optimized to run machine learning and LLM type applications, which again, are very heavy on the CPU to begin with. Another unique advantage is that Ryzen AI Max chips tend to have a more powerful integrated graphics card, which means that without having a discrete GPU, they can often achieve performance similar to as if you actually did have a low to mid range GPU on your laptop, which means that they can be featured in much smaller laptops that don't necessarily have the space to fit a discrete GPU while giving similar performance. Of course, they are extremely expensive in nature because of this very fact. And also they're only really featured on a handful of laptops. I probably have more fingers than, than there are laptops at the time of this video that actually feature Ryzen AI Max chips. But nonetheless, this chip does exist and yes, it does offer top tier localized AI functionality for anyone who might need it. Well, that's pretty much a wrap in terms of the processor lineup. A couple of very important things to keep in mind. Firstly, I did not cover desktop class processors, nor did I cover legacy processors like AMD Athlon, for example. So those aren't in this video. It's also worth noting that every new generation of AMD processors will generally be more efficient and powerful than the previous generation. For example, next year's Ryzen 5 will likely be nearly as powerful as this year's Ryzen 7 chip. And that is a perfectly normal part of the product cycle as time goes on. 
Also keep in mind that Ryzen chips have a lot of, you know, like reach. So for vast majority of consumers, the Ryzen 3 to 5 category is where you'll want to go to hit that sweet spot between performance and price. And it's more than sufficient for a general use case. Ryzen 7 above chip should only really be considered if you have a more power case or a power productivity use case. And especially Ryzen 9 and AI Max chips are really for niche use cases. Getting those chips on their own merit won't make sites like YouTube load any faster and you might actually be wasting your money by getting those chips. So make sure you consider your use case and kind of compare it to the you know points I made earlier to see which processor is right for you. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I will try my best to get to them. You know, I sometimes get a lot of questions. I'm not able to get to all of them, so I apologize in advance, but I will try. And also, of course, I may have covered other concepts in different videos. I'll leave links to all of them below, including concepts about generational differences. So again, all that handy stuff will be below. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button and sub to our channel. It genuinely means the world to me and motivates me to make more videos just like this one. Catch you in the next one.